Good Monday evening, everybody, from the home office backyard. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with the latest edition of News Channel 3's astronomy blog, Sky Blog 3, with the appropriate props in the background for the time being, an old Bausch & Lomb uh, spy, spotter scope, and again, the very rusty tripod that has served me very well over the course of the last several years. Hopefully you have something like this. If you ever see something like this in a swap meet or something in and along the lines of like a garage sale, something like that, something you may want to pick up. Up. It doesn't have to work perfectly, but it's one of those things that it may not be the latest digital several thousand dollars worth of astronomy equipment, but you never can tell when something like this may come in handy for spotting stuff like the supermoon or the Pleiades, which we will talk about coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that. Over the next several nights, decently clear skies with a few exceptions coming up, especially into late tonight and later on this week. We'll talk about that in the extended forecast in just a little bit. But some decent sky gazing conditions out there so definitely want to get your kids away from the computers and the TV for a little bit and get out there and try a little bit of backyard astronomy you never can tell what you're going to see but before that just past supermoon comes up because then it's going to be very much on the bright side weather into tonight clear for the most part we got a few clouds drifting on through hopefully not as much that's going to be causing any problems for again the stargazing for this evening so hopefully you're not going to see too much to worry about there we will see a few clouds into tomorrow morning late tonight tomorrow morning could be some scattered showers taking place but nothing major at this point unfortunately we could use the rainfall but we're just not going to be seeing too much of that at this time could be a few good views of the space station out there into the next couple of nights and a couple of satellites although they're going to be fairly dim the viewing opportunities at this time of the year are not all that great we're getting close to that but we will see again the continued possibility of some faint viewing conditions there are a lot of websites out there you can take a look at We'll list some of those on our web page for more information at wreg.com slash weather. Tomorrow morning, you may be able to see the International Space Station briefly at about a quarter to six in the morning. You're going to have to get up very early to see some of the best viewing opportunities for the space station over the next several days. And again, outside of scattered chances of seeing this and that, there's really not a lot of major satellites out there like the ISS or Tiangong 1 and 2, and those will be visible at various points in time out there. Heading into, again, the next couple of days, the moon is still very close to Earth. It became the supermoon and it reached perigee, the closest point to the Earth, at about 8 o'clock mid-south time this morning. But it's still an opportunity to see it. It'll be rising here relatively soon, just after sunset, and should be some very good viewing conditions, especially if you have a very good view to the east. What is the supermoon? Well, again, it was just a little bit closer to the Earth than usual, about maybe 10% closer, more or less, somewhere in there. It's about, as Neil deGrasse Tyson said, the difference between a medium and a large pizza it's just really just not that visible that much you can still see it was very bright though so that was something and it was the closest that the moon had been to us in about 70 years. So that's something to think about. But with this article, very good uh, writing from Capital Weather Gang and on the Washington Post about why this is important. Because even though it's a little bit overused, I have to say it's going a lot toward overused. Unfortunately, it is getting people interested in astronomy. And hopefully you're one of them. So this is something that may come in handy over the course of the next several days and weeks as the kids go out and say, hey, it's a supermoon. What does that mean? Well, let's go out and take a look at it. Exploring asking questions. That's what science is all about. And here's one of the best places that you can do that, taking a look into the night sky and seeing stuff like that. That article posted on my website, so you can find out more about that. If you'd like to see the moon in the night sky, It'll be very close to the uh, star Aldebaran in Taurus the Bull, which will be rising in the next several days. But once again, we'll be looking at the possibility of seeing some decent conditions for viewing that. Unfortunately, the moon's going to be very bright. Aldebaran's not the brightest star, so you may have to squint to see that a little bit uh, as the moon's going to be decently bright out there. Also seeing, again, some of the very nice conditions out across the area. When it comes to viewing stuff in the night sky, including the Leonid meteor shower, which there is going to be some of those meteors available into the course of the next few days. The Leonids are actually known for a meteor storm that happened back in the early 19th century, which produced over 100,000 meteors per hour. So this 
Could it happen again? Sure. Will it? We don't know. But that's just one more reason to get out and watch for those meteors out there that will be increasing over the next several days. And of course, don't forget about the Pleiades, the cluster of seven bright stars near and between the constellation of the area around Taurus the Bull and close to Orion. Very easy to spot and some uh, would be a great target for backyard spotting scopes like what is seen uh, next to me here or an old pair of binoculars. Get those out and go out with your kids and do some stargazing there. Meteors, there's tons of them all over the place. We live in a shooting gallery of them and they're all over. We need to find out where they are where they're going and if they're a threat to us and there are a whole bunch of what are called near-earth objects that could be a big problem so that's something we need to take a look at and make certain that we know about and NASA and FEMA are preparing for the threat of a of an attack from in and around the uh, one of these meteors coming down and making their way down toward the ground attack is the wrong word uh, looking again at a meteor strike possible and that's something that we need to know about well ahead of time what does it take to get a mission ready to go to make Make certain that uh, we can prepare for this and get people ready. This is all available to us, and we're making plans now, but we need more scientists, more engineers, more astronomers to join the hunt on things like this, and this is a great article from NYT Science if you'd like to see more about that. Join me for more on Skyblog 3. We'll continue to update on things astronomical, what's going on in the night sky, and if you have any suggestions for what we can take a look at, what we can update you on, please email me at austin.onic at wreg.com. A great night for stargazing out across the area. Again, a few clouds here and there, but not doing too bad for the Mid-South, and always nice to make certain that you come appropriately dressed uh, for the occasion. Didn't realize that I had this back there need to remember to do laundry, I guess, a little bit more often. Uh, great night again for, again, stargazing. If you see something and take a picture of it, tweet it to me at aonic underscore WREG3 and keep me updated on what you're doing around the Mid-South where it comes to astronomy groups like Mid-South Astronomy, other places like that. If you have a public viewing session, definitely want to think about that. Interested in science, the Oxford Science Cafe with the University of Mississippi will be holding their final meeting of the semester coming up tomorrow night in Oxford at Luann's Bakery and Bistro if you'd like to know more about gamma ray bursts very cool thing to take a look at and to hear more about and that's happening again tomorrow evening in oxford mississippi details on my various social media websites live and direct from the news channel 3 home office backyard i'm meteorologist austin onick stay tuned for the latest information on news channel 3 and whatever you do when it involves science or astronomy remember to keep looking up